Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to uh, our afternoon's presentation. Um, we'd like to uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, even though we're, we're not together, we appreciate your being here. And I'd like to uh, introduce both myself and our panelists today. I'm David Bensinger, one of the administrative directors of instruction here at Granada Hills Charter High School. Uh, also joining us today will be Ms. Gina Corpus, the director of counseling. Uh, Ms. Julia Hallman, uh, also an administrative director of instruction. And also Christine Scotty, who is uh, our director of athletics and activities. And even though we're apart, we're not together, we're not physically on campus, um, we do want to make sure that we're communicating with you as much as possible and giving you um, as much information, both about the summer programs and also about uh, our plans for the fall, and which you can expect at the, um, once the school year starts. And so to, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, Summer Transition Academy, what that looks like. We will also discuss the distance learning plans for the fall. We're also going to have an opportunity to learn more about um, activities and athletics that are here on campus. And, and even though they're not here on campus now, students can still participate in those in the fall. And also the graduation requirements, what you as a parent and guardian can help your students succeed. And finally, at the end, we will have time for questions and answers. So throughout the presentation today, if you'd like to type in your question, we will get to that. We'll save time at the end to do that. And so with that, I'm going to say goodbye to our panelists video for now so we don't distract you. I'm gonna turn mine off as well and we'll rejoin at the end um, of the presentation, okay? So we're gonna stop our videos. And first, what Summer Transition Academy is. And this is one of our key programs. We've had this for many years here at Granada. And the goal of this is to uh, offer an orientation to Granada Hills Charter, uh, both the campus, the programs, what the academic expectations are for students. And this year, more importantly than ever, it's also to help build connections between teachers, peers, and the rest of our faculty and staff. And you will see that throughout the year or throughout the summer this year, the activities and the live sessions really focused on how we can um, build those connections with students. We'd also like to uh, use this time during the summer to help the families become more familiar with what's offered at Granada. And so we're gonna be offering a series of interactive smaller workshops uh, next week. Uh, we're gonna offer two a day, both at two o'clock and 6.30 p.m. The first one's on Tuesday, which is gonna be more about navigating remote learning at Granada Hills Charter, how to use the technology. Uh, the next one would be about how to support your student during COVID-19. And then the final one on the 23rd of, this should be July, sorry, July 23rd would be how to prepare for college and career. And so look for more information through your student's Chromebook account. What we're gonna do with that is limit those to just Granada students and just Granada parents. So we're gonna distribute that information through your student's email account. So with, the, with uh, the plans for the fall, so we announced to our community last week that on, we are going to begin August 17th, which is the original start date, with full distance online learning program. Uh, more detailed class schedules will follow. And also please check your email, refer to the website, also to the Granada Hills Charter app, because that's where we're gonna be sending our updates as, as we get those. So with distance learning, our primary platform or pretty much our only learning platform that we're going to use is going to be Google Classroom. And students should check this every single day. Students will notice that when they start their Chromebook, it does load to their Google Classroom page, but again, that's going to be the primary way that an assignments are announced, uh, announcements are made. All of this is gonna be through Google Classroom. And so continuing within Google, teachers are gonna use Google Meet for their live instruction. And the distance learning program really consists of two parts, synchronous and asynchronous activities. Synchronous activities are the live interaction. That's where students are live on video with their teacher, with their class, and that's where we have this, the teacher and the student discussions, the group activities, direct instruction, and also where we're going to be taking attendance. Asynchronous activities are going to be the independent work, the homework the students assigned are assigned, the different assignments. And then with asynchronous activities, because these can take place really kind of whenever, planning is important. So make sure that, that students are noting the due dates. And again, Google Classroom is going to be the primary way that assignments are going to be both assigned, distributed, and then turned back in. And as far as what you can expect, 
Uh, first, you can expect daily live sessions of anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes per class. And again, this is where attendance is going to be taken. You can also expect there to be interaction and collaboration with classmates. And our teachers are going to have this expectation of, of our students as well, that students are participating, that they're working together. And then also you can expect that the Granada Hills Charter policies will still apply. And please refer back to our parent student handbook to see the majority of those. But I want to highlight a few that are important or new with distance learning. And the first one is that we are expecting students to both be respectful and to participate. And so with that, please follow teachers' directions with regards to turning cameras on or off, turning microphones on or off, muting, unmuting, um, making sure that even though we're in this different distance learning and online learning environment, that we are still participating politely and respectfully in, in conversations. Um, students should also make sure that they have a good place to work as much as possible. So check your background to make sure that there's nothing that would be distracting or would be a violation of any kind of policy that we might have. And then also respecting each other's privacy. That even though it is important to remember that there isn't an expectation of privacy in the virtual classroom, you should still make sure that we're not taking videos or pictures or audio recording the lessons or sharing that class information with anybody else. In terms of what technology that we do offer here on campus, we're fortunate that we've had a one-to-one -one Chromebook program for the past five years, since 2015. So both our students and our, our faculty and our staff are very well versed in, in how this program works and what it looks like. We have a loaner program on campus, so if a student has any sort of technical issue or needs a repair, we're able to make those repairs here on campus and provide a loaner Chromebook to students when, so they don't, they're not without a Chromebook at any time. We also provide um, T-Mobile hotspots for students who don't have reliable wi uh, wireless or internet access at home. Um, in terms of filtering for content, for appropriate or inappropriate content, we offer that both at home and on campus. And there's a couple ways that you as a parent or guardian can be supportive of your students through technology. Uh, the first is through Home Access Center. And that's the way that you can log in. You can check your students' progress for classwork, for grades, for assignments that have been turned in or not turned in. You can view your students' schedule. And it also provides a way that you can contact or reach out to your teachers. Um, Google Classroom Summaries will also, if you sign up for this, you'll receive a weekly email summary that will detail what's been assigned, what's been turned in, what's missing, and any other important class announcements. And one note on this, again, that should be July 21st. If you join this interactive session, we'll have more information about how to navigate through remote learning using these specific tech uh, tools. And if something does go wrong, if, for example, if a student is having trouble logging on or their wireless goes out or they miss an assignment because of that, uh, the first step is to email your teacher and don't wait on that. Do that as soon as you can. Second step would be to call or reach out to our help desk in a couple of ways. One, you can call, they're at extension 370. It would ask you to leave them a message if, if you call and aren't able to get through. Or you can also email the help desk at ghctk12.com. And then finally, just a reminder about fall registration. So you're here at Summer Transition Academy, you're enrolled, but you need to complete the registration process for the fall. And so a couple steps on that. One, check your email for an email from registration at ghctk12.com for what's called your SNAP code. And once you follow the link with the SNAP code, complete the registration steps, and then I'll walk you through um, the information that you need to provide and you can email us at registration at ghctk12.com if you have any questions. And then finally, we'll have uh, most of our ninth grade students have already had their ID picture taken and picked up the important information on our, when we distributed Chromebooks a few weeks ago, we do have a makeup day on August 12th for students who didn't miss that. Okay, and with that, I'm going to turn this over to our Director of Athletics and Activities, Ms. Christina Scotty, who is going to walk through some of the different opportunities that are available both um, remotely for students and then also on campus when we hopefully and eventually return. Hi, everyone. I hope you are doing well. But just to give you an overview, we have many activities offered on campus. Um, 
sorry, the screen. I'm not quite sure how to go back, but we offer many activities, clubs, uh, DECA robotics, uh, various clubs and activities. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, these activities will still be coordinating and organizing, but they'll be virtually. So they'll, they'll be meeting virtually. In regards to athletics, we also offer over uh, 59 teams, 26 sanctioned sports. Our governing body is the California Interscholastic Federation. Um, our section is the CIF Los Angeles City section, and we are in the West Valley League. And very briefly, uh, over the last school year, we had a few team champions, girls basketball, girls cross country, girls golf, girls soccer, and girls tennis. So we've, we have a history of, of doing well, and we've been very successful, particularly over the last few years. Um, here is a, a picture. We'll offer the links at the end of this presentation, but this is um, a view of our athletics webpage and our activities webpage. Here you'll find all of the information regarding tryouts, eligibility clearance, um, and contact information for all the staff members and coaches. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, here you, you'll see a breakdown of our team sports by season, um, our fall team sports, winter team sports, spring team sports. Um, typically fall runs from July through November, winter will run October through March, and spring will run January through June. Um, I'll, I'll go back to that, um, an update on that um, on the next slide regarding COVID and some of the schedule changes uh, that are occurring. But regarding eligibility requirements, tryouts will be posted to the, web, uh, the website. Right now, everything's on hold, but I do recommend that students uh, get their physical form and turn that into the health office as well as submit an emergency card uh, because those two things will be required still when we are able to hold a tryout and resume activities. And the little screenshot that you see here on this slide will show you the, um, the link to the eligibility clearance webpage where you'll find all of the academic requirements, um, the paperwork that you would need to fill out, and it also has all of the forms um, available via PDF so that you can download it, fill it out on your computer, and then you can also email it, and the contact information is there as well. Oh, sorry. There we go. So as I mentioned previously, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, all activities and all physical activities are on hold at the moment. We will be receiving an update from the California Inter Interscholastic Federation uh, next week. Um, it is my understanding and similar to how a lot of the college conferences are leaning and have been um, scheduling thus far. It looks like we'll be starting all sports in the spring semester. Um, but we'll have more information on that next week. And we'll post that to our website We'll also be sending out emails, and then you can also always check back on our social media pages because this is where we um, post a lot of our information as well, particularly re with regard to athletics. And if you have any other questions for me or if there's something that we don't an answer in this presentation, feel free to send me an email or um, give me a call. My contact information is listed on the school website, um, and my email address is listed here. And I've also listed for you the administrator over student services and the student store manager. Okay, thank you. And now I'll be handling off to Mrs. Corpus. Okay, hi. Um, so um, again, uh, my name is Gina Corpus. I'm the administrator over the counseling office. Um, and today I'm just gonna talk about the graduation requirements for Granada. Um, so, all students um, are required to complete 230 credits at the time of graduation. Um, so, I'm going to just go in a little bit more detail on the next slide of what that's going to look like. So, the first thing is um, STA, which all of you or all your students right now are attending STA. 
Um, so that already will be completed. It is a graduation requirement. Students that do not complete FK this summer um, are required to complete it um, next year. Uh, and it is, again, an, a graduation requirement in order to participate in the graduation ceremony. Uh, there is also 140 minimum credits of A through G coursework, and I'll go into um, what that looks like in the next slide. Uh, all of our students are required to have five credits of government, five credits of economics, 10 credits of a local option. Uh, those of you who have already had your counseling appointment, a local option would be um, like the intro to engineering or the intro to business courses or the exploring computer science uh, classes that your student has enrolled in in the ninth grade. Obviously there's more, um, but that's just um, some samples of that. Um, and 20 credits of PE. Most of our students will take care of those credits um, in their ninth and 10th grade. Uh, PE is required as a ninth grade course. Uh, we do have students that will play sports and if they are playing sports in the 10th grade, there is a possibility of getting that waived if, we, um, if they are part participating in a school approved sport. Um, in addition to that, they also have the 50 to 70 um, elective credits that they need to complete. So with A through G requirements, those are the college entrance requirements for the UCs and the CSUs. Uh, we have it broken down. Um, they're the A through G, so it would go three years of social science, four years of English, three years of a college prep math, two years of a lab science, two years of a world language, one year of a visual and performing arts, and one year of a college prep elective. At Granada, the majority of our students will exceed the minimum requirements, um, specifically if they're looking at um, attending highly competitive schools. So most of our students will take more than the, than the three to four years. They'll end up taking um, four years of science and also three to four years of world languages. So again, most of our students will go above and beyond the minimum. Um, uh, I also put in a link or actually information for the June 23rd. It's actually July 23rd, I apologize for that. The July 23rd Preparing for College and Career Workshop. Um, there, that presentation will be conducted by our college counselors and they'll go into more detail of what these A through G requirements are, plus um, also information on how to support your student and making sure that they have a strong college application when, um, when it's time to apply. So the good news, when you graduate from Granada uh, with a C or better in all of your A through G classes, your student will have met the minimum eligibility requirements for most four year universities, including UC, CSU and private. So um, the, the A through G requirements again are embedded in our uh, graduation requirements. So to learn more, again, I recommend you attend the July 23rd workshop, Preparing for College and Career. Um, next week, our college counselors are going to be working with your students during STA. Um, they're going to be going over Naviance, which is a software that we use for college exploration and career explorations that our students are going to get familiar right in the beginning when they start. Um, we also always recommend students do look at taking a rigorous coursework. Um, we offer AP, IB, honors, um, and college courses on our campus. Um, we will be sending out more information about the college courses offerings um, probably within the next few weeks. But uh, again, we do have uh, plenty of offerings on our campus to make sure that you are, um, that your student is engaging in a rigorous coursework. Um, and then again, uh, to be a well-rounded student, we encourage uh, meaningful community service. A lot of the students will take care of that by participating in clubs and some of the clubs will participate in community service. Um, but outside of that, um, definitely when you attend the Preparing for College and Career Workshop, they'll talk about the importance of building your college resume. So how to help your students succeed. Um, we are also, again, on July 22nd, uh, we are going to be having a workshop led by our school social worker um, and intervention coordinator. So uh, our school social worker will be, um, they will be doing a presentation jointly to talk about um, what you can do. You'll, there'll be time for a Q&A where you can ask questions, um, raise concerns you may have about um, just starting the fall semester and transitioning. So I, I definitely encourage you to attend the workshop. And what can you do to help your students succeed? Uh, definitely, um, you know, I understand that with everyone at working at home, it can be very difficult, but um, it would be helpful if you can uh, provide a quiet place to study for your student. Um, and also at, at times review and prepare for tests together. 
uh, and make sure that your student is attending all their live sessions and log and is logging in daily and on time. So what can you do? Um, again, just additional tips is making sure that you do not schedule any vacations during final exams. Students that are absent during final exams will um, receive a zero on the final. Um, we also want you to encourage your student to solve his or her own problems and be a self-advocate. Um, definitely encourage your student to take responsibility for his or her action. Um, when we talk about self-advocacy, um, as we know, a lot of these students, your students are all coming from middle school. Um, a lot of times the communication between the teacher and the student is really important. Um, it really is uh, about self-advocacy on part of the student. But of course, as parents, um, you know, especially with the ninth graders, it is also important for, for you to be involved. So where can you and your student get help? The first step is going to be to talk to your student's teacher. Um, that is always, since they're the ones that are communicating um, in the fall during Zoom meetings or uh, Google Classroom, that's going to be your first step. Um, we also encourage you, um, your student, to sign up for the free online tutoring sessions that we're going to have. Um, so we provide after school and before school tutoring. Uh, during COVID, they have been providing that service to all of our students online. Uh, and we also have um, a contract with tutor.com where we offer 24 hour a day, seven days a week, online free tutoring to our students. And again, you'll have that information when you attend the July 23rd um, supporting your student workshop. We also encourage parents and students to email your child's counselor if you have questions or concerns. Uh, parents can also schedule a Google Meet for a face-to-face -face virtual meeting if need, if need so. And uh, again, you can always reach out to any of the administrative staff or any other adult if need be. So class schedule information. Schedules will be available for viewing on Friday, August 14th by 3 p.m. There are going to be limited program changes and um, after school starts. Uh, and permanent program day is on August 28th. That means that it will be the last day that uh, any schedule changes will, will be able to happen. Um, and the reasons for program changes are gonna be limited. Usually it has to do with scheduling conflicts, whether it's uh, in a conflict with an athletic or some other activity. Um, and we are planning to post a link where parents or where students can go to request a course change. Um, please uh, take a, we'll, we should be sending that out soon. Sorry for the misspelling, I just saw that. Um, we'll try to get that soon um, sometime in August. And then a couple of other things, just remember um, ninth grade is a, is a transitional year. Um, so it can be very tough, but there is a large staff support here on campus for you and your students. Um, we do say trust but verify. Um, we always encourage parents to check home access to reach out to the teachers if they have questions or concerns. Um, we have had, there are times where students will say, well, I'm doing it or I'm logging on. Um, so it's always good for parents to just double check and, and things are getting done. Um, enjoy these four years. Uh, they're gonna go really quickly. Um, so we encourage you to do the best and participate in activities um, and really enjoy your time here at Granada. I'll ask our panelists to come back now. We are, um, we do have quite time for questions and answers if you all, or we do have time for questions and hopefully we will be able to provide you uh, answers to those if, um, and then just as a reminder that our primary way to, to communicate with our community is gonna be through email. Um, so please make sure that you're checking your email on a regular basis for updates from us. And then also, um, if you have not already done so, download the GHC app. Um, either through Android store or also through the uh, Apple store. And you can also check our, our website for updates as well.